Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape oil painting demonstration with your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to day two of volume two, <laughs> Past Master Series. The painting we are doing today um, was uh, it's a study after Alexander Hedwig Wyant. I don't know the title of this piece, so I'm just calling it Landscape. I did it as an 8x10. Again, I have no idea how big his original was, but it was pretty fun to paint. And um, I was attracted to his, uh, his sky, of course. You can see that the way things are broken down, the sky is taking about two-thirds of the painting. And it was a bit of a challenge in that um, I could tell that his, uh, I actually had kind of low resolution reference, but I could still tell that his, his painting style in this was very quick and immediate, and it's a, a bit of a challenge to, um, to reproduce that because, you know, I'm making a study after somebody else's painting, so being quick and immediate is, uh, and doing a study after someone else's painting is a bit uh, past my skill level, I guess, but uh, I don't know if it's possible for anyone. I imagine it might be. Um, anyway, hey, I, uh, you saw I flashed the, the palette up briefly, so um, if you're not aware, you can slow down these videos a bit um, using the uh, YouTube uh, filter button down at the bottom. I think it's a little like gear icon at the bottom of the video. You can slow things down, but that just gives I uh, kind of do a little premix before I get started. Um, actually, putting the brush strokes down uh, in color, and uh, I've been flashing that up. In some videos I've done recently, I am showing the entire mixing process, but not every video, not every time. It's uh, I don't know. In fact, I did uh, two very little small paintings yesterday, uh, and I mean, they don't take that long to do. Pardon me. I just had a big sneeze before uh, I, I turned on this microphone here, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it didn't make sense to me to show the whole color mixing process there. And I'm not sure I'm going to do it. I have to see how it works into the uh, videos that I'm putting up on YouTube. Uh, I know I certainly did it in the full, uh, the full length uh, Georgia Ness video I put up the um, tail end of uh, last week. So, and I'll do it here and there. And I probably, at some point, um, I'm not doing past master's studies right now. I got like another eight weeks or so. Um, and I'm gonna be concentrating on my own stuff for that time. But, um, well, most of it, some of it, at some point I'll have to get back into it. Because uh, I have everything set up. I have boards prepped. I have the titles uh, written on the back. I'm ready to roll, you know, ready to rock and roll. But I was going to uh, try and, uh, it's like I had 44 set up. So um, I did about 10 or 11 and then thought, well, yeah, this is a good breaking point. Um, and they are fun. It's fun to do these uh, bigger ones, too, uh, especially after, like, doing 150, uh, <laughs> maybe it was 175, actually, uh, in the 5x7 size. Um, yeah, wow, these numbers add up, don't they? You know, that's just, it's sort of my personality to find something that works and then to keep working at it and perfecting it until I get bored. Um, but the thing about landscape painting is is that uh, I knew it's very challenging. If you're a painter, you already know that. And um, it's, it's endlessly fascinating, endlessly challenging. And uh, I, I don't see myself getting bored with it anytime soon. Um, that's just my take. It might be different for someone else, but uh, and I knew it would be like that. That's why when I was looking at end-of-life careers, you know, the end of the life, let's hope it's another 25 years or something like that. But, uh, pardon me. Um, I thought, well, that's landscape painting. I could be, I could be in 
interested in that you know for the duration and getting better too so um, now I mentioned uh, you know um, I've had some feedback on the channel people want more information about what I'm doing you know to me it's self-evident this is a sky it's got blue in it it's got gray you know the grays are tinted either with a, a sort of earthy modulation or a cool purple modulation you know generally uh, I work off of my basic middle uh, gray which in its in itself is a cool tone quite easy to warm up with a little raw umber or even things like uh, the burnt sienna um, the, the the ground level it's you know my approach to greens is very consistent I start with my basic mic screen which is a mix of black and yellow and I'll tint that with uh, things like blues or with the thalo green or with the permanent green or with the burnt sienna to get uh, a various range of greens a lot of times I'll start like what I'm doing right now um, is with a very very dark green that just has lots more black in it and maybe a little blue sometimes and uh, that's building off of the black shadows that are already there so and I always model my trees out from a the darkest to the lightest uh, forms that's you know I don't know if that's how I was taught but it's kind of uh, obvious that that's a good way to go as far as I'm concerned although you know in the second second pass and things like that I don't worry about any of that but when I'm not getting into color like I'm doing right here that's what's up anyway that's a little information on the painting and you know you guys have my color palette being flashed at the uh, beginning I didn't use every color on that palette uh, for this painting and I seldom do use every color on the palette for every painting but uh, you know you, you with those basic components uh, it's it's e pretty easy to work out for someone who's studious I think anyway getting back into what's happening in the studio uh, I've set up some more uh, reference I'm kind of revisiting I love to revisit old scenes and uh, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes uh, people that have maybe bought a painting done from that scene in the past might be, oh, oh, ooh, you know, but then come on. It's a different painting entirely. Just, you know, to me, the reference, pardon me, it's just a catalyst for creating a painting. You know, I'm not into uh, faithfully um, duplicating my uh, photographic reference, no matter how stunning it might be. And usually it's not all that stunning actually a lot of times it's quite pedestrian it's the painting that that every it's all about that painting and that painting is all about what i'm doing right then it's all about being in the present and creating something in the present moment i don't get hung up on the past too much and as far as the future goes i just want to keep working and getting better so that's what's up there but uh going through um recently i had to go through uh what would i say go <clears throat> I don't know, I was organizing some files on my hard drive and I could see I was looking at my big spate of minis and uh, it became pretty clear to me that I sold a heap of mini paintings and I think the reason for that is because of the uh, the customer base I have out here is predominantly tourists also they hit a price point that people can afford and um, while I did sell, I sold a nice uh, $900 painting to somebody very recently, and it was like a you know, 12 by 16 or something like that. And I'm really glad to do that, and I like doing 12 by 16s, but not a lot of people can swing that way. So that's why I've been I'm doing some more minis. I'm getting into that. Anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end here. Thank you so much for joining me today. New subscribers, you guys rock. Old subscribers, you rock even more because you've been with me sticking around. Anyway, I'll be back real soon with another video. Meanwhile, please take good care and stay out of trouble.